Hi, this is Charles Kaplan again, and this is about the uh, fifth video of about a dozen I'll be making on hypothesis testing. So far, you've learned how, in your classes, you've learned how to calculate the mean, which is a point estimate. You've learned how to measure the standard deviation, which is a measure of the variability of the data. You've learned how to create confidence intervals, which provide an interval rather than a point estimate of the mean. Now, with hypothesis testing, you're going to learn how to determine if the estimate of the mean is what we call statistically significant. That is, when we sample the data, could we obtain that measure of the mean by luck or chance, or is it indeed representative of the true population mean? In order to, in order to do this, we have to follow some steps, and I've written them out for you all. Uh, we need to list the important information, such as the population mean, the sample mean, the sample size, sample standard deviation, and level of significance. We need to draw a picture, which is going to keep things clear for, for us in a visual uh, from a visual perspective, we need to find the critical values, which are the specific points under the curve that we're interested in. We need to identify the null and alternate hypotheses, H sub 0 and H sub 1 respectively. We need to form a decision rule, which tells us under what conditions we reject the null hypothesis. We need to calculate the test statistic, Z or T, which is going to tell us whether indeed we reject or don't reject the null hypothesis. And then we need to form a conclusion and write a few sentences about that conclusion. Okay, so here's a problem. In one local community, the union claimed plumbers earned $45,000 a year with a standard deviation of $3,000. A recent sample of 120 plumbers found the mean income to be $45,500. And the question asks, at the 10% level of significance, can we conclude the mean income is not equal to $45,000? and we also want to find the p-value. So let's start and let's do it the way I'm talking about. We want to list the relevant information so mu, the population mean, is 45,000. x-bar, the sample, is uh, 45,500. The sample size was 120. The standard deviation is 3,000, and we're working to the 10% level of significance. Let's draw our picture, and let's see what's going on. This is 45,000 here in the middle, which is associated with a Z value of 0. Remember, the standard normal curve, the distribution, has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. And now, whether or not this is a one-tail or two-tail test, if it's a one-tail, which tail we're interested in, that's the tough part for students in these problems. So let's see. Um, what's the question? At the 10% level of significance, can we conclude the mean income is not equal to 45,000? Well, not equal to. It can be greater than or less than. It's the same as saying, is it different than? These are, you know, keywords that you should be aware of. So not equal to, different than, it's a two-tailed test. So here and here, uh, and we're working to the 10% level of significance, so we're going to have 0.05 in each tail, because the level of significance, 0.1, is telling us overall how big the region is, the reject region. So overall, it's 0.1. That gives us 0.05 in each tail. Well, now we want, we've drawn our picture. Now we want to find the critical values, the points associated with the, the, the z values associated with these two points. Well, I'll show you two ways to do it. We can, you, well, let's do this. If we have 0.05 in the tail, this region must have. 0.45 in it, and the same with this region. So let's go to our book. We're going to look for 0.45, and if we do that, we see that lies between 0.4495 and 0.4505. So we go down the z column to 1.6, and over to here, it's in between 0.04 and 0.05. So it's 1.645. So 1.645 here, negative 1.645 here on the lower end of the curve. And if we wanted to 
we could use this table we could go to 1.6 and we see that in between 4 or 5 we have 0.0495 and 0 .5, 0 0.0505 it's right in between those two points we're going to get the same z value regardless of the way in which we find it so okay now we want to write the null and alternate the alternate h naught and the null h1 we always do the alternate first and that answers the que that's the question that's being asked at the 10 percent level of significance can we conclude mean income is not equal to 45,000 so mu is not equal to 45,000 and the alternate is just the opposite so mu is equal to 45,000 and now we're going to just got a little drink of water I'm a little thirsty here so now we're going to calculate our test statistic Z to determine you know uh, well actually first we're going to calculate the decision rule so let's write this out and this tells us under what conditions we're going to reject the null hypothesis well we're going to reject it if the Z value the test statistic falls to the right of 1.645 or to the left of negative 1.645 right this is our reject regions these are our reject regions to the left of negative 1.645 to the right of 1.645 so let's write that out reject H naught the null hypothesis if Z is greater than 1.645 or if Z is less than negative 1.645 and now let's see if we do indeed reject or do not reject let's calculate our test statistic Z which is equal to X bar minus mu over the standard deviation over the square root of n and I encourage you to write out the formulas every time uh, it'll help you memorize them so X bar is 45,500 and we're subtracting off mu 45,000 divided by s which is 3,000 over the square root of n which is 120 and if you do the arithmetic you'll see that this works out to be about 1.83 so 1.83 is greater than 1.645 so our conclusion let's go down here our conclusion is uh, we reject the null and we conclude that plumbers do not have I'm gonna to need to go to another page do not have let's do it this way incomes equal to forty five thousand dollars that's our conclusion now we want to calculate the p-value well to do that the p-value is just the area in the tail associated with the z-value the test statistic the test the z-value associated with the test statistic so that's 1.83 so there's going to be two different ways we can do that we can do this 1.83 that's 0.4664 and that's the central region area but we want the tail so we take 0.5 minus 0.4664 and I believe let's see what that's going to give us that's uh, 0.5 minus 0 0.4664 0 0.0 
uh, 0.0336, but we did a two-tailed test, so we need to multiply that by 2, and that gives us 0 0.0672. So that's our p-value, 0 0.0672. And uh, again, that's less than our alpha, the level of significance, 0.1. And so again, this confirms we reject the null. It'll, we won't get a different outcome from the p-value approach than we do the other approach. Uh, and we can, uh, I do have the time, to calculate the x values associated with these two points. In other words, what's the x value at the cutoff here, uh, both above and below the mean? And remember, that's 1.645 is the z value associated with that. Well, remember that z is equal to x bar minus mu over s over the square root of n. And we know all these things except for x. That's what we're looking for. I mean, we know x bar, but now we're looking for an x value associated with the cutoff points. So to do that, we need to use both z values. So we need negative 1.645 is equal to x minus 45,000 over 3,000 over the square root of 120. And we need to do the same thing for 1.645 is equal to x minus 45,000 over 3,000 divided by the square root of 120. And if you work that out, uh, I believe the numbers work out to be 44,549.5 and 45,000 450.5. So these are the two values associated with the cutoff points. I'm going to round them off because it's, I think because it's basically, let's say 45, 450.5, and 44, 549.5. So, 44,550, 45,450, those are the two cutoff points. And again, we were interested in 45,500, and that fell. If you notice, 1.645 is the cutoff, 1.645, and 1.83 was the test statistic value. That's why it was so close, because the cutoff points are so close to the 45,500. Okay, once again, I'm Charles Kaplan. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. I wish you all uh, good health, good happiness, uh, long lives, and a lot of good luck. Bye-bye.